Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Rustam and in today's video tutorial, I'll talk about post-restoration period. Uh, this is a period uh, in English history, English, English language, uh, language and literature history that lasted from 1660 uh, up to 1700. Okay, so uh, this is uh, my fourth lecture uh, in this series. Uh, I am talking about uh, 17th century English literature, okay? So, uh, you need to, if you want to have more uh, clarity about this, uh, uh, you know, topic, please listen to three earlier lectures. Now, uh, in today's lecture, I'll, I'll talk about poetry, drama and prose written in post-restoration period. But before I move ahead, uh, I would like to talk about video quality enhancement. As this video is being recorded with the help of X Recorder, which is a mini uh, app which I have down downloaded from Google Play Store, sometimes students uh, uh, report me that uh, video is blurred. So, if you want to enhance video quality, so these are uh, certain uh, steps which you can uh, introduce to enhance video quality. First of all, if you are watching this video on Android phone, please go to the right top corner and you will find three dots. So click on them and select highest quality level, okay? Like uh, 480, 720, etc. And if you are watching this video on laptop or desktop computer, then uh, on your vid uh, YouTube video frame, the at the bottom of the video frame, uh, you will uh, video, uh, you will find a circular uh, wheel type button setting button just uh, click on it and uh, set the highest quality level that is pixel level and if you are watching it on android phone please uh, uh, hold the phone horizontally okay uh, switch on auto rotate button and uh, see it and uh, in uh, on laptop or desktop computer you can watch this video lecture in full screen mode and even after uh, uh, 10 to 20 seconds, even if you don't enhance quality of the video, so your screen will get settled and uh, automatic quality enhancement will be there and you can find all the, uh, you know, every slide uh, very, you know, clear and there will be no blur uh, text. Okay. Uh, next, uh, who is the audience for this video lecture? Usually, I record my lectures for BS students, okay, and uh, students who are studying from any of the university at Aripur University, Aptabad, or Azara University, Mansera, and affiliated colleges with these universities. However, uh, students of any university in KP or Paki uh, elsewhere in Pakistan can uh, listen to these lectures and they enjoy. They can enjoy their content. Or uh, anyone who has general interest in uh, literature, he or she can find this uh, video lecture uh, profitable uh, usually my audience is BS students so I don't uh, usually go into detail and I just uh, cover uh, bold points or uh, important points and because uh, uh, in first semesters uh, we don't want to uh, intimidate students and don't uh, want to terrorize them that because they have some uh, other subjects as well so we just uh, cover most essential things now next uh, uh, reference books that is the lectures which uh, I record uh, for this series I consult these books Compton Rickett, uh, Rickett uh, History of English Literature Lagos and Conzambian's work which is with me AC Bob the works and uh, short history written by Ivor Evans okay then these are two Indian writers uh, Dr. B. R. Uh, Muluk and Dr. Uh, Tajinder Singh uh, so I consult these uh, then at the end Dr. Asan Faruqi this is uh, a a history of English literature in Urdu written by Jam uh, Dr. Asan Faruqi uh, while he was at the University of Karachi or maybe it has been published by by printing press of Jama Karachi so uh, these uh, mainly I consult Compton Rickett and uh, Ifer Evans and then these two uh, authors so next we move to this one so uh, already i have covered pre-restoration period in my previous lectures so today's topic is post-restoration period that is age of dryden uh, which is from 1660 up to 1700 so here politically we can say charles ii that is son of charles first was restored to throne and uh, he was uh, 
again monarchy was restored in england so let's move to the next uh, slide uh, here we go so restoration i, I have already covered that uh, charles charles first was beheaded in uh, 1649 and then uh, uh, cromwell uh, government was there puritan government or you can say parliament was in power and then uh, in 1658 uh, son of charles first that is charles second who was living in exile in france he was uh, invited back and he uh, was restored and muraki was restored so these slides have been already i have already covered so i am quickly flipping them flipping through so here we have uh, pre restoration drama already covered okay then uh, features of pre restoration drama covered then we have comedies of ben johnson uh, that is comedy of humor already covered so you can listen to my previous lectures then we have uh, uh, ben johnson's comedy these are list of ben johnson's comedy then we have uh, some uh, pamphlets prose work written in pre restoration period uh, beckons essay prose work okay covered and uh, a thrice version of bible covered it was uh, covered in my previous lecture so it was a great pr uh, prose work then i talked about uh, 17th century pre restoration poetry so up to up till this slide uh, i have recorded my lecture uh, i have covered pre restoration uh, english literature okay now today's topic is a uh, post restoration period our history of 17th century english literature in post restoration period so here uh, as you can see around about 40 years so what was written during this period time period uh, i'll today talk about briefly and uh, remaining details uh, students will cover in the form of assignments and presentation poetry drama and prose so Uh, general trends in post restoration period although it is a 17th century uh, and it is second part of second uh, uh, 17th century so complete reversal of puritan ideals and way of life okay puritan ideals and way of life so uh, uh, you know before charles second was restored to monarchy are uh, he became king of england uh, again in 16 uh, 60 uh, actually 1658 so uh, cromwell and parliament was ruling and uh, Purit puritanism was there simplicity and uh, you know uh, uh, drama was banned etc so when charles ii came because charles ii uh, was living in uh, in exile in france and there he had enjoyed gay life and uh, all sorts of recreation so when he came back so he had two uh, you know uh, aims one was to uh, wreak revenge on on the enemies of his father okay he wanted to victimize and uh, those who had beheaded his father charles first so he hated uh, the way of life of puritans and their way of life and everything that was uh, puritanical every everything that was related to parliamentary forces uh, particularly whigs he was uh, a tory and so he hated whigs second was monarchy was restored uh, against commonwealth that is commonwealth was no more democracy was no more parliamentary uh, rule of law was no more so again dictatorial or despotic or tyrannical or you can say uh, monarchic rule was established in england all restraint and discipline of puritan age was thrown to the wind that is there was no restraint and no discipline initially there was all type of uh, uh, you know uh, licentiousness so a wave of licentiousness and frivolity was there okay اردو میں جیسے ہم کہتے ہیں بہت زیادہ اوباشی اور یعنی عیاشی اور اس طرح کی چیزیں اور فروالٹی واز دیئر اینڈ چارلس سیکنڈ ریناؤنسڈ اولڈ آئیڈیاز ان لٹریچر ٹو سو ایون ان دا ریمز آف لٹریچر ہی واز اگینسٹ دا پریویس ایج دیٹ از ایج آف ملٹن اور پیورٹن ایج ایٹسیٹرا سو ہی انکریج فرینچ ماڈلس رائٹرز اسٹارٹیڈ فالوئنگ فرینچ ماڈلس 
However, there were two contributions made in the second part of 17th century and these were realism and precision. So I'll explain these uh, when uh, in the next uh, slides. Uh, what were these? A sterical approach was introduced in uh, 17th century. Let's move on. So literary trends. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide that these two things were introduced. Realism. So in contrast to a uh, previous age, uh, which had been influenced from Elizabethan age, that is a bit a uh, kind of uh, romanticism. So here, uh, realism was introduced. And uh, however, initially, uh, uh, the init uh, practices uh, uh, were uh, vice, vice in the society, vices in the society. So w these practices, corrupt practices, you can say, they were depicted and portrayed in uh, uh, literary works. However, later on, both uh, sides of life, uh, vices and virtues, they both were depicted in literary works. Now, Prisian. Uh, in previous uh, age, if you remember, there was metaphysical poets who were writing, you know, a kind of, uh, there was, there were, there was verbosity and quibblings over uh, p uh, petty issues and far-fetched conceits and metaphorical uh, metaphors, etc. So here there was precision, directness, okay, and simplicity of expression. There was no verbosity, no exaggeration involved sentences. Like in Milton's Aeropagitica, there are long sentences uh, involved and complex sentences. Uh, there was There is too much use of Latinism and uh, classical references in previous age okay so in this uh, age that is post restoration literature uh, there is simplicity and even uh, a royal, royal society was established in england uh, under the orders of charles ii the purpose of this society was to introduce uh, simplicity and direct, directness and uh, in expression okay now uh, let's move on Restoration poetry. Uh, as I earlier mentioned, that I won't uh, discuss every poet in the age because this way, uh, first semester students may be overburdened. So, uh, in order to lessen their burden, I'll just focus on the main literary figures. First is uh, Samuel Butler, and second one is John uh, Dryden. Uh, uh, as you know, after John Dryden, Post-Restoration literature is also named as uh, Age of Dryden. He was the most prominent figure. So quickly let me discuss uh, the work by Samuel uh, Butler, uh, Hudibras. Hudibras is a mock, uh, uh, mock uh, uh, kind of uh, you know, heroic, uh, written in heroic couplets. So it is a style on Puritans. As I said earlier that... Uh, uh, there were two, uh, you know, schools. One was uh, politically, they, there were Whigs and there were Tories. Whigs were supporters of parliament, parliament and uh, Tories were supporters of monarchy, monarchs, uh, so uh, dictatorship. So, Debras was written uh, to, you know, mock and uh, 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 the life of uh, uh, Puritans. So it is, uh, you know, uh, Debras is a uh, character uh, which has been depicted as hypocritical and full of pedantic learning. Uh, actually, uh, pedantry was the way of life in previous age, like uh, metaphysicals and, uh, you know, uh, Milton's life, uh, age of Milton, etc. So the poem has three parts and each part has three cantos. So I won't go into detail because I'm going to give this work as a presentation to students or as, a, as an assignment. Now let's move on to John Dryden. Poetry of John Dryden. So this can be divided into three uh, segments as you can see on the screen. Political styles, uh, doctrinal uh, or religious poems and the narrative are the fables. So political styles... Uh, uh, I'm just going to mention uh, Absalom and Achitophel, and then the medal, and then Mac Flecknoe. So I'll discuss these three works briefly in the next slide. Uh, as far as doctrinal poems are concerned, there was uh, Religio Lacy. Uh, it was written in defense of Anglican Church. 
now interesting thing is that john dryden uh, he was first supporter of he was uh, protestant first okay and uh, in the capacity of being protestant uh, he uh, you know loved the church of england and he advocated church of Eng england so he wrote this work in favor of uh, anglican church but later on he converted to catholicism and he became roman catholics so so he wrote another work hind and panther so it was written in defense of roman catholicism it indicates that john dryden had the knack or had the you know uh, art to defend uh, I, i mean to give uh, arguments uh, in uh, either direction uh, if he was a very you know skillful uh, argumentator so uh, in both capacities he uh, wrote the, the, these two doctrinal uh, points as far as the fables are concerned uh, like uh, one is uh, palamon and arcite which has been uh, insp uh, he uh, wrote uh, un uh, after being inspired by jeffrey chaucer because in canterbury it is there is a, a tale knight's tale so in knight's tale knight uh, uh, tells the story of palamon and arcite so here a heroic uh, uh, poem a poem in heroic couplets have been uh, composed by john dryden on that fashion then another one is alexander's feast so these two are uh, narratives but they they uh, they are in the form of verse but poetry but they are narratives now let's talk about political styles before i talk about political styles let me give you some background why style was much popular in 17th century post restoration literature let's move on so background of political styles as i mentioned earlier that charles ii uh, wanted uh, a successor so uh, there was a debate uh, between tories and whigs about who will who, 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 who would be the successor of charles ii now uh, charles ii wanted to uh, wanted his brother to succeed to succeed him as a king and he does not want he did not want his son uh, that a duke of uh, manmouth who was an illegitimate son and uh, ill begotten son so uh, charles ii did not want his son to uh, to you know uh, succeed him as a as a ruler of england now uh, what happened uh, 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 sons uh, charles son uh, charles second son that is duke of manmouth he was incited by uh, earl of shaftesbury okay and uh, uh, charles second son that is duke of manmouth took arms against his father so there was a general uh, tendency that it was uh, earl of shaftesbury who incited the son and uh, now uh, earl of shaftesbury was put in the tower that is uh, he was put in jail and now there was uh, a trial so before the trial occurred uh, supporters of charles ii that is uh, 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 tories they started writing propaganda literature okay so propaganda literature was written uh, uh, from both sides but the strong side was charles ii so they uh, particularly john dryden wrote his uh, styles okay and uh, whigs were supporters of parliament as you can see here and uh, tories were uh, supporting monarchy so as there was no parliament it was kingdom it was kingship and it was monarch charles ii so in the next slide i will talk about the works of john dryden so uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, works of john dryden on uh, are based upon this very issue that is succession of charles ii uh, who should be excluded whether brother should be made the successor or son of uh, charles ii should be made successor now here is tyr uh, uh, absalom and achitophel so i won't go into detail but uh, when i i'm going to uh, give this as a work uh, to you know uh, students they are going to read this work in which uh, absalom uh, that is uh, the son of uh, king david uh, there is a long history so it is actually Uh, this shows uh, son of king and this is uh, earl of shaftesbury okay earl of shaftesbury so it is a political style written by john dryden 
and it was written before the trial of uh, Shaftesbury. Actually, uh, Tories wanted that Shaftesbury po- uh, should be beheaded, and uh, however, the court released him. And uh, the uh, you know supporters of uh, Shaftesbury, they uh, you know enjo- uh, they were victorious, and they put up a medal. Uh, okay, and on that ma- medal, they uh, put up effigy of uh, Shaftesbury. Okay, now. John Dryden uh, wrote another uh, poem uh, heroic in the form of heroic couplet and he uh, you know a kind of uh, made fun of uh, 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 Shaftesbury I love Shaftesbury in the the title of the poem was the medal so these two works were written uh, politically and they were aimed at mocking uh, Earl of Shaftesbury earlier this one was to you know cause his death uh, by the court but they, this was unsuccessful and this was written later on when he was released and his supporters uh, were jubilant and they were wanted to enjoy his victory so he uh, wrote this work now next we have uh, 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 Mac Flecknoe so this was a personal style written by uh, John Dryden it was against uh, Thomas Shadwell who was his literary uh, opponent okay in 17th century post uh, uh, actually, uh, Thomas Shadwell was a Whig. He, he, he was a supporter of parliament. So, he was uh, writing uh, propaganda literature uh, on behalf of Whigs. Okay? And uh, John Dryden was on the side of Charles II. So, uh, in this uh, personal style, uh, jo- uh, John Dryden uh, sterilized uh, you know, uh, Thomas Shadwell. And he is uh, satirized as occupant of the throne of dullness, like his father Flecknoe. Mac means son, and Flecknoe means uh, father. Anyhow, when uh, uh, students will be given uh, these three topics as assignment or as a, as presentation, they will read uh, uh, summaries and they will present. So, uh, BS English first semester students, they can have this uh, uh, in the in in their front that uh, in post restoration literature style was a very popular genre of literature and these are three works of john dryden okay let's move on restoration drama so uh, drama uh, yes in previous century there was complete ban on drama that is from 1642 up to 1660 so drama was banned by uh, Puritans, Puritan government because Cromwell, Cromwell uh, and uh, Milton and uh, they, they were from uh, Puritanism. So drama was banned, rather all recreation was banned. Now as soon as Charles II was restored to English uh, monarchy, uh, he became English monarch. So drama uh, uh, was again on the stage. But uh, previous drama catered to everybody, but here uh, the drama in post-restoration literature just catered to the taste of aristocratic class, that is high gentry. And as we all know that high gentry are high ups, they are very fond of sophisticated life, foppery and fashion is all uh, there, and intrigue in high circles, particularly in political high circles. <laughs> We have all sorts of intrigue going on. So this uh, was portrayed in drama. So a very uh, new genre that is comedy of manners. Uh, in previous uh, pre-restoration literature, if you remember, we talked about comedy of humor. Ben Johnson was the practitioner of comedy of humors. So here we have comedy of uh, manners. So... Uh, one person, one comedy, uh, comedy writer was William Congreve. So he, this is the name of his work, The Way of the World. This will be given to students as an assignment. And one of the students is going to present or write an assignment on it. Let's move on. Uh, so as far as restoration prose is concerned, uh, there, there was not much in the uh, you know realm of prose. Although John Dryden also wrote some prose, but I will mention only John Bunyan, okay? He was a precursor of novel because uh, Pilgrim's Progress uh, is a kind of novel, if, if we say. So, uh, it's a, you know, basic shape, its basic shape, its structure is just like a novel. 
so we can say that uh, foundations of novel uh, were laid down in post restoration literature in the form of pilgrim's progress again i won't discuss this and i leave it to students as an assignment so i have just quickly covered uh, uh, this uh, 17th uh, century post restoration literature before i uh, take leave let me uh, show you remaining slides so that you may be in picture so let me quickly go back to the top so just a minute so here uh, as i said earlier uh, that uh, uh, let me take you to the uh, this slide so now i think uh, 17th century literature has been covered through uh, my five videos okay uh, already i have uh, recorded four videos and now this was the last video uh, in order to uh, cover 17th century literature so 17th century literature uh, 17th century literature uh, had uh, two segments pre restoration period and post restoration period in pre restoration we have age of milton and in post uh, uh, restoration period we have age of dryden so uh, uh students are requested to listen to previous videos so that they should have an idea about age of milton that is pre restoration period and uh, age of dryden i have just covered uh, particularly uh, drama poetry and prose so keep watching uh, these slides and you should be clear about now a political a little bit political history as well as uh, you know literary history of England in 17th century if you have any question uh, you can leave this question in comment section and i have also given links of earlier videos uh, in the description so you can uh, listen to those videos uh, before listening this one or you can listen to those videos after listening to uh, current video and if you want another video on any particular topic related to 17th century or previous centuries you can uh, uh, give uh, your uh, you can uh, write your comment so that i can have a, a, i can have an idea what uh, type of video lecture you want in future okay thank you very much and uh, soon uh, i'll record uh, further videos to cover 18th century english literature